going on everybody I'm back with another video and today's video is going to just be a 352 analysis just going to be part one of this because there's so many directions we could take this but I really appreciate all the support for this video so far and um, if you could keep subscribing that would be great um, like the video too that's a huge help so I can keep producing content and um, well let's get right into it so as we see the team in possession the blue team is in there 352 against a 433 so what I really want to talk about today um, is the first phase of their buildup in a 352 system because in a 352 system um, obviously the back three and this just goes uh, for all back three systems with three central defenders usually I find in the first phase of buildup using the goalkeeper um, the first phase of buildup is some kind of rotational or asymmetrical phase um, be due to the fact of the goalie coming into play so we can call phase one uh, rotational phase and this is all with the goal in mind of progression of the ball so let's say uh, variation one our wide center backs can drop into the half space along the goalkeeper and now our most central defender he can become a pivot with the eight and now we have our two uh, other central midfielders so just naturally they could become wide midfielders or this is where we can have asymmetry controlling the 10 spot but I'm gonna put the rest of the team uh, the defensive team I should say in position just so we have a little bit more reference points here and we're not just talking hypotheticals without any diagrams so just give me a minute so that's our attacking midfielder and now we're playing with two forwards okay our fullbacks are right there now to forwards there we go so one we can play as is asymmetrically um, with our rotation with our holding midfielder um, but then just something really quick I want to show you is something that Pep has done recently with his defenders um, and this is kind of new and it's, an, it's a version of asymmetry um, and but not so much rotational so we can have our double pivot in a 3-5-2 you can go with a single pivot or double pivot and then now you can have two central defenders next to each other on one side almost overloading the first line of the half space and now what this will do is it'll draw more players forward and it'll test the pressing triggers of the opposing team so now the wide midfielder and the forward they have decisions to make on how to press and who to press because many times if we see a Liverpool system uh, Firmino he'll occupy one pivot and we'll see a midfielder jump and the other midfielders will slide now the winger will press from the inside to out but then with here it leaves a lot of space for the wing wing back with two center strikers pinning a back four so maybe he changes his pressing points and now when this center back gets the ball then maybe this is his cue but then it, it leaves uh, a more stable circulation because you have one you have a playmaker as the center back or the goalkeeper which then can be both platforms to launch your next progression from so it does um, it, it can I should say destabilize an opposition um, and it just makes them have more decisions to make when it comes down to it and with the double pivot we can go back so now see that's a new concept so I won't get too much into that because it's only something I've seen just from Pep's team I haven't looked too closely into it though um, so we can we can see how he develops that idea so now I'll just circle our three center backs or I'll just circle the one center back here 
So our one center back, he is now alongside our pivot, and now he is part of the double pivot. And now we have our two attacking midfielders, and they can either play in the half space, maybe a little wider in the half spaces, um, to create more of a diagonal passing option. And now what the purpose behind them playing in the half space is further up the field would then to try and be to take advantage of the pinning of the back four from the two strikers. So what this will do, so the back four is effectively pinned, so now these players can't jump without conceding dangerous space to the opposition. So that could free up players further up the field in the half space. And so now, one last thing uh, I want to say in the 3-5-2. So 3-5-2, and then now from here, often with two strikers, they can work off of each other. So let's say they have a position narrow, and the midfield is, let's say they're playing very wide. Let me just give me a second to work out the numbers here and say they're stretched trying to play dual roles so very stretched asymmetric midfield so now we have our two strikers and now one can pin for one to go back in and then now we have almost uh, a pentagon or a um, yeah a pentagon shape in the middle to create more passing options into the central corridors especially the half spaces and in the 10 area because the 10 areas I've found has been often um, uh, how do I say it often neglected or just looked over um, by many teams so this can be a great way so now you have players occupying each of the corridors each of the central corridors and advanced areas so giving you high quality passing options into dangerous areas and you have your double pivot, so you have the means to uh, launch these passes through. And uh, you have the three-man buildup, so I'll move the player. So now we, we effectively have created passing options between opponents um, throughout the thirds of the field, or throughout the first third into our midfield third of progression. And that it all stems from the um, two strikers being able to work off each other so one striker is responsible for pinning, and now the other two, the other striker is effectively an attacking midfielder, and now the fullbacks will jump probably, but now there's space and we can create 2v1s moving forward, or just create positional superiority to take advantage of the space. So this was just a quick introductory video. I just wanted to show you the first two movements. In the next video, I'll go over a 4-4-2 and some other formations and uh, where their weaknesses may lie and how our 3-5-2 can go over that. But I just, I'm really in, intrigued by the first progression in a 3-5-2 when using the goalkeeper because if you have the right players, there's so much flexibility that can come with those three center backs and the rotational work that is available in your first phase of buildup. So that's just a little food for thought. How can we use these three center backs? How can we rotate them to open up players in advanced areas for our first progression? All right, well, hope you enjoyed the video today and I will see you for the next one. Please subscribe, it's a huge help, and thanks so much for watching.